Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I just want to show you how I'm going to do an analysis for the Iowa um, residencies, uh, so residencies in the state of Iowa, and it includes the University of Iowa, you know, hospitals and clinics and so forth. But uh, what I'm doing is taking some of the numbers from pharmacy school rankings for residency, and I want to show you on an Excel sheet what I've done. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken every resident and all I care about right now is their alma mater. Okay, where did they go to residency school before PGY1? And what I wanna show you and kind of get this so clear about how regional and how local some states are uh, with their um, residents. And this is relatively common. So when we look at the alma maters of the residents, um, we see that if you consider Drake, who is a private college in central Iowa, 17%, University of Iowa, that is in Iowa City, okay, uh, you have 17 plus 46, you have 50, 63% of the residency matches in the state of Iowa come from somebody who went to school in Iowa. Now, when you look at the other states, and you say, okay, well, what does Iowa actually, what's Iowa close to? Um, University of Wisconsin, University of Illinois, Chicago, South Dakota State, University of Missouri, University of Minnesota, Michigan, Medical College of Wisconsin. Those you can all consider as Midwestern colleges. And then only Georgia, East Tennessee State, and Albany uh, fall outside of those. So, Again, I want to make clear that when you are applying for residency, in general, you are going to find your alma mater or your alumni in residencies in the same state. Now, Drake pulls from many more states, I believe, than Iowa. Uh, I, I haven't seen the Iowa White Coat Ceremony, but I know I've seen Drake's and uh, a bunch of them are from uh, the Midwest and, and out of state. And that tends to happen with private schools because private school tuition is the same for an out-of-stater as an in-stater. Very different for someone who's an Iowan. But there's another number that you can kind of look at, which is of the total matches, you know, what percent are these 16 and 6? So we'll do a little rounding here, but... It's about 40% of the University of Iowa graduates, if they're going to do a residency, will do one in the state of Iowa. If we look at Drake, that's 20%. And again, that kind of feeds to a lot of people being from Chicagoland area, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and those types of places. And so that's about what we would expect, uh, that a private school would have fewer in the state, uh, simply because people can tend to move back to their home states. Uh, where for Iowa, likely those are people that are in state. And so what does that tell us? Well, the other thing we want to look at is the match rate rankings. Okay, and this comes from the book. And these are match rates. Again, I still prefer persistence rate, which is a combination of how well these people interviewed and how well they matched. Uh, but we see that when you look at the schools, um, these are relatively high match rates, okay? So Iowa has uh, 52, that means it's about the top third of all in the country. Drake is top half. Uh, Wisconsin, number 11. Uh, Illinois, Chicago, right around Iowa. Uh, South Dakota State, 91, that's a little bit outside. Um, so we would see that down a little bit lower than the, the half. Uh, UMKC, 17. Minnesota, 20. Michigan, 14. Georgia, 42. Wisconsin 6, East Tennessee State, and Albany 119 and 73. But what I want you to notice is that when it comes down to these residents where only one matched, they're coming from very high ranking schools. Okay, So when you are applying out of state, uh, it seems that it's a lot more important that your residency match ranking be a bit higher. Now, what happened with East Tennessee State? This is still top half. And then Albany, um, this maybe there was some kind of tie to it or something like that. So what we can do is we can look at the actual sites themselves and say, okay, well, where did people land? Okay. So when we look at uh, Iowa Methodist, uh, we see Iowa, Drake, and South Dakota State. So uh, two from in-state, one regional. 
Uh, Cedar Rapids, uh, they hadn't updated to the 22 residents or people who graduated in 22, but Wisconsin and Drake, so again, Midwest and Iowa. Uh, Des Moines, Mercy won Des Moines, so Iowa and Drake. Uh, Waterloo with South Dakota State and Minnesota, so two out-of-staters, but still in region. Okay, and so what we're doing is we're making sure that we don't confuse the difficulty of one versus another. So if we look at uh, the 21, that means the people that are there graduated in 21. That might have been updated, and or it might be students that gra graduated a year earlier and decided to do residency a year later. Uh, I'm guessing that in this case, they just haven't been updated, uh, and those were um, older students, and uh, I can't get uh, the most up-to-date data. But it's really not as important with what I want to go over here because we're going to see what it is to be saturated from the state and then to see something that really takes from many different states. So when we looked at Iowa Methodist, we saw, you know, the, the two in-states. Uh, we saw one in-state in Cedar Rapids, two in-state in Mercy One Des Moines, and then two out-of-states in Waterloo. And if you're not as familiar with Iowa, the centers, when you talk about kind of the two big city centers, uh, you're talking about Des Moines and you're talking about Iowa City. So Waterloo is about an hour north of Iowa City. And uh, I ended up uh, actually working in Waterloo sometimes uh, at uh, retail there when uh, we were in uh, the market crash, actually. And there just weren't very many jobs. And one of the jobs that was available was uh, overnights in Waterloo. And I would actually sleep in the Home Depot parking lot sometimes because I couldn't get home and sleep. Uh, it was so far away. So I'd have to kind of sleep on the way and then uh, try to, to make it home. So I, Waterloo's fine. And so is uh, Cedar Falls, which is right next to it. And uh, Cedar, uh, then there's uh, Iowa City, which is to the, to the south. But if you see something that is away from the large, large academic medical centers, uh, that's going to happen, uh, where you're going to see probably regional areas, uh, but maybe not uh, as much within state. Now, when we look at the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, and this is the acute care. So when we think of academic medical center, acute care, uh, this is the one that you're going to see the most applications from the most people. And when we look at this, and kind of go through the seven residents and their alma maters, we see that this is really consistent with what you're going to see. So we see University of Iowa twice. Uh, I don't know about the Nebraska hometown person. They might be an Iowan. They might you know, go to uh, some school in Nebraska like Creighton or something like that. I have no idea. But what matters is when you look at these numbers and you see uh, Iowa, Illinois, Chicago, Michigan, Missouri, Kansas City, uh, Georgia, you see very high ranking schools. And these are the rankings for the match. When you actually get to the persistence rankings, they can be even higher. Uh, University of Iowa is actually one of the highest in the, in the nation with, with that in, in terms of how many people started and how many people persisted to get the residencies that they wanted. And so what we're seeing is uh, not just the Big Ten and part of the SEC, but we're seeing many of the top schools in this academic medical center. And so we see that, okay, they're not just going to take Iowans. They're going to take maybe a couple from Iowa that they know, uh, but they're going to take uh, many from out of state as well. Okay. Uh, then we go to the two ambulatory care ones. And this is what's a little bit frustrating when you look at the... Um, when you look at the directory, and again, the new directory doesn't come out for a while yet, but when you look at the directory, it says the exact same thing for acute care and ambulatory care, University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. They will have different numbers though. And so one number says I'm applying to AmCare. One number says I'm applying to uh, the University of Iowa you know, acute care. So really wanna be careful that you're applying to the right program because they'll have the same name, but a different number. Now here is where we end up with something like Allen Hospital. Okay, and Allen Hospital is also up here in Waterloo. So I, I pulled up a, um, a map of uh, all of this. So um, Des Moines is the 
central Iowa. I actually live here in Ankeny, a northern suburb uh, of Des Moines. I guess it would be a suburb of Des Moines. I mean, it's its own city. Uh, Iowa State University is up here in Ames in the middle. The University of Iowa, where the pharmacy school is, uh, is in Iowa City. The other pharmacy school is here in Des Moines. Cedar Rapids is just a little ways north of Iowa City. It's a very large city. And then Waterloo, Cedar Falls, uh, where the University of Northern Iowa is, uh, is a little bit uh, further north. Okay. And then when you see Mason City on something, that's going to be up here. Okay. So when you look at the residencies, this is kind of the big area right here uh, where you're going to see uh, most of those residencies in the state of Iowa. Okay. So let's kind of go back to that. And so now we see the opposite of what we saw before with the Mercy One Waterloo Medical Center. And again, this was 2021 graduates. We saw no University of Iowa graduates. We saw South Dakota State and Minnesota. Whereas in Allen Hospital, that is similar, uh, you know, different, similar city, you see three University of Iowa graduates. Okay? And then Prairie Parkway Pharmacy, which is University uh, Unity Point Waterloo, we see Illinois Chicago and University of Iowa. Okay, so when you're looking at who's there, there's kind of three different possibilities. There's saturated by the flagship state school. There's state school and private school in the same state. So maybe if you're in Alabama, you're seeing Auburn and uh, it's McWhorter School of Pharmacy at, at Samford. Or you've got a complete diversity of schools from around the country or around a larger region like the Academic Medical Center. The big take home point is that your the meritocracy that many people believe exists, that is, may the best CV win, is absolutely not how it works in really many residencies at all. It's... Do you have some ties to us? Have we maybe had a five week rotation with you? Uh, do we have a relationship with you? Are we going to just further that relationship? But the big thing is that these areas want to hire you in many cases. And when it comes to, you know, maybe you're from Jersey or from Massachusetts, or maybe you're from Florida or Washington state and you come to Iowa, you're coming to Iowa to do a specific program, but you're planning to go home. That's not really what a lot of these places want. What a lot of these places want are people that are going to come in and are going to stay and are going to work, or they're going to complete a PGY2 uh, in the program as well. So when I came, first came to Iowa, it was a real big deal that my spouse was an Iowan because when she was going through that residency, they were confident, okay, this is someone that'll probably work for us. And she did. Uh, she worked for Hy-Vee in her community pharmacy residency, and then ended up being a manager for them, and then made the transition to the VA. Uh, she would have had the opportunity to be the manager at an extremely big store, a uh, retail store. And she decided that, you know, the ambulatory care type route was something she wanted. And uh, now she's remote four days and uh, goes into the office on Tuesdays. But when it comes to your applications, it is so critical to do this analysis of the state that you're applying to, or even a region. So let's say you're in Texas with a huge number, or New York, or California, where there are many, many, you know, dozens and dozens of residency. Uh, you can do this in an area. You can do it in the LA area, the Bay area, those types of things. But the key is, when you have this data and know, okay, people are from Iowa versus other schools, Drake, in-state, and the percentages are so high of people they take from the state that you recognize, okay, I may have to do a couple more applications uh, to make sure that I get myself a spot. But if you're from like a Wisconsin or a Michigan or a Minnesota where you're top 20 in the country or Missouri, Kansas City, uh, which many of these programs got uh, those that level of applicant uh, in Medical College of Wisconsin, uh, then you know you can be safe that okay you'll probably get an interview and they'll want to talk to you because you are you know top twenty top twenty five in the country uh, in terms of match and and there's something that about your school that uh, ranks very highly in terms of your abilities uh, with the residency. 
Well, let's take a look at PGY2 uh, just for a minute, just so you can kind of see uh, the difference. So Mercy One Des Moines, uh, and again, these are not the newest. Uh, these are from last year. So all we're doing is just kind of taking a look for, you know, to kind of figure it out. But Creighton is an emergency medicine pharmacy rotation. Um, Creighton University student is at the emergency medicine pharmacy rotation in Mercy One Des Moines Medical Center. Most of the residencies, though, are on the east side of the state and the University of Iowa. So there's someone that's a South Dakota State grad in pediatric. I thought they had two spots. I was really surprised I couldn't find the second uh, resident. So maybe they just added that spot. Maybe they didn't fill it, but uh, I couldn't find the data on PGY2 uh, phase two, even though there were, and it takes me a minute to say this right, there were more available PGY2s than there were applicants rejected from the first phase. So I'll say it again. There were more available PGY2 residents in phase two than there were applicants rejected in phase one. That means that even if every single phase one person matched, there would still be leftover PGY2s. What that tells us is that the PGY2s that are available are not matching what PGY1s are prioritizing as a next step, that they're outside of the area that they want to practice in. Uh, there was one oncology resident from Iowa, emergency medicine from Iowa, ambulatory care from Iowa. Again, I couldn't find the second uh, ambulatory care resident. Maybe, again, they added that on. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, Michigan was critical care. Montana was palliative care pain management. And I couldn't find the resident for psychiatric pharmacy at the VA. So, again, I couldn't find the phase two data to see if these programs were in phase two. Uh, last year. I do have the phase one data for the 400 or so PGY1s, and that'll be really important later on as you're kind of saying, okay, well, as I'm applying, let me just check that phase two list real quick so that I can see, hmm, it looks like they had a little bit of trouble filling this spot. Let's, let's find out a little bit more about why that was. Uh, a lot of times what happens is, especially because it was really, really much more favorable for the applicant than the site last year. Usually it's that they have a cutoff and they're like, look, we're going to take and rank these students. These students do not meet our standards. We know that the number of people applying for positions in phase two will be much higher than the available spots. We'll get somebody great. It's a little bit of a pain to, to do that, but the process is quick. Uh, but we're, we're going to kind of cut it off there. Or... Is there an issue with toxicity at that site? And that's a very different thing where you find that people are not filling that residency because um, maybe the staffing is just draconian with that 12 on too off. And people are just like, I'm, I'm just not having that. I want more flexibility. I want to have some you know, mental health time, those types of things. So you never know. Uh, but anyway, I, I couldn't find a couple uh, of them or three of them uh, where they were. And, and I, I don't know. Uh, so if you know them or you are them, uh, let me know who the second pediatric pharmacy resident is at University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics and who the second ambulatory care pharmacy person is at uh, University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. And um, then the psychiatric resident at the VA in Iowa City. Uh, I don't want to know their names. I just want to know where they went to school. Uh, so uh, that way I can kind of complete this chart uh, and make it uh, that way. So... Yeah, I mean, as we're kind of looking to, to kind of see what to do with this uh, analysis, I think that if you are outside of Iowa and you have a smaller state where you just don't have a ton of residencies, there is no reason you couldn't do something like this in a couple of hours and make your life so much easier by knowing, okay, this is a site that's going to take a lot of people from many different places. This is a site that's very friendly to my school. This is friendly to my region and those types of things. So, all right. Well, if you've got questions, TonyThePharmacist at gmail.com. Uh, and again, the book I used to get those rankings uh, for the school, uh, Pharmacy School Rankings for Residency, Solving the Applications Puzzle for Future Pharmacists. I uh, hope to have the audio mastered. I, I already recorded the audio for it uh, and uh, the guys doing it now. Um, kind of getting that mastered, and then I send it to Audible, and then about a couple weeks later, hopefully, it'll be ready. So uh, I'm hoping somewhere in the middle of October, I'll be able to send some 
uh, audio book recordings uh, to the email list. Uh, one last thing, uh, LinkedIn, let me just mention that, or maybe maybe I'll do that as a, a pre-roll uh, and then just kind of move everything out. But just to let you know, there is the LinkedIn Pharmacy Residency Podcast newsletter. Okay, and I did this first um, pharmacy residency newsletter uh, with gaining confidence in the residency interview. Uh, and then I'll start publishing. It says weekly, but I, I can't imagine I would wait that long to do it. It looks like I've got 545 subscribers so far, uh, but you can just check that out. Um, it's linkedin.com newsletters forward slash pharmacy hyphen residency hyphen podcast hyphen a bunch of numbers. <laughs> That's weird that they, they would do that. I wonder if there's some way for me to, to fix that. So I'll, I'll try to do that later. But just to let you know that newsletter is available. Uh, easiest way probably is to, to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist. I'm living in uh, Ankeny, Iowa. And uh, that way you can get the newsletter as well.